Welcome back to the Wild Blue Wanderers channel. I'm Scott. And I'm Ashley. And it is Friday. And you know what that means? Where you red. Where you red. Red is for remembering everyone deployed uh, in the military. So Red Fridays. I'm a proud Navy brat. My dad flew A6 intruders. And Scott's dad was in the Army. We stand behind Red Fridays. <laughs> And that's Willie. So if you've watched any of our previous videos, or our last two videos, I should say, we uh, took a trek back to Elkhart, Indiana, to the Dynamax facility. And uh, we had to get some repairs done, but we didn't really want to talk about what all the repairs and stuff were until we got it all done and all figured oh, out. Oh, and then we figured oh. we could uh, explain it all to you now. So stay tuned and we'll play our intro and we will get into everything we had done. Dynamax rally last year um, we learned a lot of stuff and you know there's a lot of collaboration between owners and one of the things that we did prior to leaving was uh, everybody exchanged email addresses and they got a list together and so if there was any communication that needed to happen um, we all had each other's email addresses when we got back home we had gotten an email from one of the other Dynamax owners and I guess uh, the last day or whatever, they went around and looked at a bunch of the other Dynamaxes. We had left a day early, so um, we didn't talk to them about that. But the email basically was telling us that there was a bracket, basically an L bracket, that holds the Dynamax body or house body to the Freightliner frame, and that those brackets were actually cracking and breaking, and that most of the, most of the Dynamax... Freightliners, uh, the M2 chassis ones, that they looked at were actually broken. Yeah, the ones that were at the rally, I think they looked at them all, and or most of the people who were there, and I think there was a, just maybe a small couple or few that didn't have any issues, but the rest of them did. So. Yeah. So we decided that we should take a check at our, look at ours, and the easiest way to look at them is to look in from the wheel wells, and you can lift the little flap up, and inside the wheel well, you can see these little L brackets and all four of ours around the wheel, the wheel well axles, say that 10 times fast, <laughs> were broken. So we decided we needed to contact Dynamax. Um, in the email, he said that Dynamax was aware of the issue, was looking for some fixes, and um, they were going to hopefully take care of them. So we were going to reach out to Dynamax. And in the meantime, we had um, heard... You know, some it was a it was a group email, so there was um, a number of responses to all. Um, a couple people had the same issue, and some people didn't have them. So that, but you know, it what it did was it made a lot of the owners really aware of the potential of an issue uh, to check. So we reached out to the Western Region Factory Service Rep, I think was the title the was their title. And uh, we reached out to her about the 2nd of November, and um, I left her email, and then a voicemail, and I think another email. Finally, about the 13th of November, I got a response back from her, and, and she said that she was asking all the people that had this issue to contact their local dealer or local facility and get quotes to have the repairs done, and asked if I had a local dealer or facility. So I immediately tried calling right after getting the email, left her a voicemail, left her another email and let her know that, you know, I don't have a local facility that, that around where we're at and that we were actually planning a trip back east and we'd much rather have it repaired back there at Moride, the people that built the frame in the first place because they kind of know how it was all going and if there was any way we could arrange that. So then it was pretty much, like Ashley likes to say, crickets. I think it was the 12th or 13th of November was, was the email I got from her. I sent multiple emails, multiple voicemails, not enough, like trying not to be a, trying a, not to be a nuisance, but. but to try to get some response from her. Um, I contacted the Western sales rep. He told me that she was the right person to talk to. She could help me. 
and I still never got anything back from her. After about three, three and a half weeks. Now keep in mind, we knew that Thanksgiving was in the right. midst, so we right. were being patient, knew that some people take PTO during that time, and sure. um, you know, could have at least had a response. Yeah. That was disappointing. Quick, a quick email, or not even email, a quick phone call could have resolved a lot of it real mm -hmm. quick. So anyway, three weeks later, I think it was like the 4th or 5th of December, I emailed her back and I copied uh, the customer service and Brian Clemens, because Brian Clemens has been so helpful in all of the forums and everything. Within five minutes of sending that email, their customer service rep, administrative assistant, I guess yeah. is the name. Within five minutes, I got a response back from her saying she was forwarding it on to Brian Knight, the other manager, and she would try to get things done. In 20 minutes, I had an email back from Brian Clemens, and he told me he would help get me set up with Moride to get things taken care of. Within another half hour from that, I had an email back from Brian Knight, and they were like right on top of it. The next day, Moride got a hold of me. We scheduled the appointment. And, another Brian. Um, another Brian, yes. <laughs> Three Brian's. Three Brian's. Yeah, Brian from Moride got a hold of me, and we were able to schedule the appointment for the week yeah. of January 22nd. Yeah. So we were a little disappointed because we had a trip planned back to Tennessee in November, and had we been able to hook this all up, we could have done it all on one trip. Yeah. But that that's okay. And as you instead, as you saw in our videos, we just happened to be that week of the 22nd. Well, the week prior to the 22nd, our travel week was the week that we had the big, huge storm that came through and everything got cold and frozen. And yeah, it was a fun time. Well, I mean, we, we did take the southern route there, but at some point you have to go from the south to the north. And we we had an adventure. So it was, it, we actually, it was a good time. They, they took good care of us once we got there. We actually got there on Saturday night and stayed at their Camp Dynamax. Pulled in, got hooked up, had to do some little repairs because some frozen stuff. Got that taken care of yeah, Sunday. Check the, the previous week's video. Yeah. Monday morning, we got in touch with the guys there at Dynamax and we turned the keys over. We rented a Airbnb for a few days. Fence backyard with the fence backyards, the dog got to run. It was good. I have a friend who lives in North Bend, which is where we had the Airbnb. It's 20 minutes away, maybe 30. We met up with him one night, so we made a good week of it. Yeah, they took our rig in on Monday morning and they took it directly over to Moride. And uh, I can't remember, I think it was Monday afternoon or if it was Tuesday, we, we emailed them because we had thought about trying to get a, a factory tour while we were there. So I emailed the two Bryans from uh, Dynamax and said, hey, I know it's last minute, but is there any chance you can set us up with a factory tour? Because we'd really like to see, you know, the workings of how everything is put together. Again, within an hour, I think, of sending that, we got a... Two responses. Two responses, <laughs> yeah. And I think it was Jared, the, which is the Eastern sales rep, mm -hmm. got a hold of us and said that Brian... Clemens had mentioned to him that we wanted a tour, so he scheduled it for Wednesday morning, bright and early, and he gave us a nice tour. So we were able to look at all of the rigs, and we'll we'll show you that full tour in a later video, but we were able to see where they actually had upgraded some of these issues already on the newer models coming through. So they don't have the same brackets on them anymore, so Moride's already made improvements on all the new ones coming out. Those are actually different than they were online. Mine just had little angles holding the body to the frame and that's what was broken on sure. mine. And now I see they got, looks like bigger tubing. Good. Yeah, more right. So good. that's good. Constantly evolving. <clears throat> and then Wednesday afternoon, we got a call back from Moride saying they were done and they were delivering it back to Dynamax. So Moride asked us to deliver it to Dynamax and let Dynamax transfer it back and forth. I guess Moride doesn't have a guest area or a visitor center or anything, so they would just preferred that Dynamax transferred it back and forth. So we got back a hold of Dynamax and it was there ready to go. So we turned around and went back out and loaded our stuff back up in it, but we still had one more night at the Airbnb. So we went ahead and spent the next night at the Airbnb. And then Thursday morning we got up and we started our trek back towards home. But the repairs looked like they were done pretty well. They changed the L brackets around the wheel wells, the four of them that were bad, and they changed them and put some, looked like maybe some one inch tubing or one and a half inch tubing and welded that all up and uh, redid the way, way it was mounted in there. Um, I did crawl underneath and I checked all the rest of the L brackets 
prior to dropping it off there and there's 14 of them. Four of them were bad. The other ones were all still good and they didn't do anything with the other ones. They just fixed the ones that were bad around the rear axle and the rest of them still look, look fine. So I think we're okay there. Scott had told me that, um, that the four that were broken were right in the area where there's a lot of movement. Right. So it's probably why those right, broke. Right around the axle and the suspension area and, you know, with all those wonderful roads that we have around this country, um, I'm sure they get a little shooken up. Talking so. to you, Oklahoma. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I-40. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and, and we just want to say that you know, other than the experience with the first person that we tried to contact and get get things going with, Dynamax did an awesome job. We're the second owners. We didn't even buy this thing new. It's out of warranty, and they still took care of us. They stood by their product, and, you know, all I can say is thumbs up. They did a great job. Um, so I have no complaints. We'll see how this holds up, and hopefully there's no, no more problems in the future, but we're uh, real happy with the way they dealt did things. Very happy. And if you're ever in Elkhart and you want a tour of the Dynamax facility, it was actually really neat because they've got these big Super C's on the M2 chassis, but they also have the Isada, which are on the, like the four, like the Ram chassis. They got the Ram chassis, um, the Isada 5s, and then the Isada 3s, which I didn't, Merce on the Mercedes, yeah. which I saw some outside. I don't remember seeing any on the yeah. line. Well, I Look at our tour video. Maybe I missed them. <laughs> I think they said they have they run two different lines, and we were there during production. I think most of their tours are after production goes home, so it was actually pretty neat. Um, but I think it just depended on what they were working on that yeah. day. Yeah, everybody was super friendly and happy to have people watching. So oh, yeah. it was it was people great. Were waving. I thought I was going to be in their way, and they're like, "Oh hi, I'm sorry, I'll get out of your way." I'm like, "I'm the tour. You're fine. You're working." <laughs> so it was everybody was very friendly and. That yeah, was great. Yeah, they they did a, they did a great job, and it's obvious that they've listened to problems and fixed some problems. If you watched our previous video where we talked about the freeze ups, we actually had the our wet bay freeze up, and we noticed it while we were doing the tour that they now in their expedition models or whatever they're calling them they now actually have the wet bay insulated more with a 12 volt heater in there and actually when we got back i emailed brian clemens and brian knight and i asked him i said hey is there any way you can tell me what model heater and and insulation you guys are using in your new ones and again it was within five or ten minutes brian clemens wrote back told me the type of insulation they're using, the brand of heater, and that they're actually looking at another heater to use instead. So, I mean, the customer service and the help that they give is just amazing. So we're very happy and pleased with that. Yeah, have nothing bad to say. So yeah. glad with our, glad we made the trip. Um, we're happy with our purchase. Yeah. Yeah, it gave me a new, new respect for Dynamax. You know, you never know about companies and you hear of all these frame flex and failure issues. I was always glad that I had a Super C on a truck chassis and I wouldn't have to worry about that kind of stuff. And you know what? It, it really wasn't that big of a thing after all. So um, it was an easy fix. They didn't have to destroy everything to get to it. it. Didn't have to take everything apart. It was just a few pieces on the frame. So one thing we noticed since we got back is that we have a light that continues to glow. Sometimes it's that one. Sometimes it's some of these. So there's full and you turn it off and it still glows. Sometimes the bathroom ones glow. So we're not sure if there's a ground wire or something underneath that got disturbed when they were welding and fixing it or what. So I gotta crawl underneath and see if we can figure out what it is. If any of you know or have any idea what causes that light to stay on dim, it looks brighter right now if you go through the camera than it is, but it's just super, just, just dim, dimly lit and uh, I say, there it goes on and it just stays dimly lit. Anyway, we appreciate you watching. We hope you'll give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel. Um, hit that notification bell. That way you'll see the next videos coming out. We're going to, you know, continue on our trip home and show you that. And then uh, we'll show you the tour of the facility. And Willie says it's, five, it's after 5 o'clock somewhere and he's ready for his dinner. So <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye. Cooper, sit. Lay down. Dogs. <laughs>
Okay, three, two, one, action. <laughs> There's your action. Welcome back to the Wild Blue Wanderers channel. Willie says hi. <laughs> and that's Willie. And that's Willie. He found this toy in the dirt somewhere. It's in one of our videos. <laughs> you want me to go or you want me to go? I, I, you're going to say it all because I don't know what you're saying. Let's try that again. Take two. So, Let's see. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, Willie, you poop. You pooped your pants. <laughs> he stinks so bad. 